The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Hey everyone, this is Dan Bova, Editorial Director of Entrepreneur.com, and thank you for joining us for today's webinar, How to Engage and Convert More Buyers with Magnetic Ad Creative. Did you know that 80% of your Facebook marketing success is based on the creativity of your ads? Well, during this webinar, digital marketing expert Bob Regnerus, co-founder of Feed Stories, is going to share the essential creative elements you should be including in your ads to stop people from scrolling and engage. Welcome back, Bob. Hey, we got a set meeting like this, Dan. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it is so good to be back. Um, this is webinar three in a series, and I'll uh, remind people, uh, I'll remind you all of the first two that we did. Uh, we were just on on Monday, and here we are again on Wednesday. It is a cold, sunny day in Chicago. I have my uh, contributor on the Ultimate Guide to Facebook Advertising with me, Mark Ingalls. How you doing, Mark? I know it's pouring in St. Pete today, isn't it? It, it is. I'm doing great, Bob. Thanks. I'm excited to hear what we have to share. Awesome. So just like uh, the previous webinars, again, a lot of you are, are in here for the third time. So uh, I, I didn't bore you or I didn't offend you. So I'm really glad to see so many uh, common names again. Uh, just like last time, Mark is going to be monitoring the question box, which went really well last time. Uh, my suggestion would be if you do have a question, ask it soon. All right. Uh, we're not going to get to all the questions. I'll guarantee you that. What I will do is look at all the questions after the webinar and over the next few weeks, I'm going to be pulling those questions out, the ones that I think are most pertinent to uh, the most people. And I'm going to be producing kind of on-demand videos that Entrepreneur will be pushing out uh, to all of you who've registered. And I think you're going to find that really useful. Uh, some of it may be me doing some screen shares and things like that. So I look forward to that. So ask your questions. Uh, we will have time to get to a few. Mark will uh, monitor those and uh, we're, going to, we're going to get to those at the conclusion of the presentation. All right, um, with that, we're gonna get rolling because we're talking about the most important part of Facebook advertising today. Um, the first two sessions were absolutely, nece uh, absolutely necessary, uh, but this is where you're gonna really start to make money is in, in the ad creative. So let, let's get rolling here. We're looking good, Mark. I got my screen showing, correct? Everything looks good, Bob. Awesome. All right. So we're going to talk today about how to engage and convert more buyers with magnetic ad creative. So we're familiar with how magnets work. We're going to pull people in. That's the idea here. All right. I got to go back to my mantra. Every time you hear me talk, you're going to see this. Our goal is to build highly responsive Facebook ad campaigns that deliver the right content at the right time to the right audience. If we understand this, if we follow this, our campaigns are going to be more profitable, they're going to be more efficient, we're going to have less waste, and we're going to generate more revenue, generate more profits. So follow this, know this, okay? If you didn't catch my first webinar, uh, we built some foundational elements. We, we talked about how to build a perfect audience. So targeting, we talked about how to do that, okay? then. Uh, just on Monday, we did how to leverage Facebook's algorithm. So we talked about campaign structure and campaign objectives. Uh, so we talked first about targeting, then we talked about structure. Okay, very important to have those things in place to really have a successful advertising campaign on Facebook. Today, we're going to talk about being creative. Creative is both an art and a skill. All right. Um, I am not an artist, at least in terms of what you would think of, uh, unlike my daughters who were amazing artists because my mother-in-law is an artist. So they, they got that gene. It's, an, it's innately wired into them to be creative and artful and be good at painting and drawing and things like that. Um, I'm creative in different ways, just like you all are creative in different ways. So somewhat, some of advertising, I think, comes naturally better to people than others, just like athletic talent and other types of talent. But I also believe that it's a skill. 
Um, if, if, if you watch before, you know, I'm a basketball coach as well. I'm not just a business coach. You know, today my court is you all here on GoToWebinar. Uh, but, you know, next week starts basketball season and I'll be coaching on the hard court. What I say is I've got a team of 12 young guys and every one of them has different talent levels. OK, however, every single person can improve their skills. All right. So that they become better players. And I believe that no matter where your skill level or or how artful or creative you are right now as an ad creative person, you could develop your skills and become better and essentially improve your results just through repetition and study. One of the ways to do that is be a curator of great ads. And here's what I mean. Uh, most of us are on Facebook uh, at certain times of the day. Hopefully you're not wasting too much time on Facebook, but you will see as you're looking at pictures and, and, and hearing about what your family and friends are up to, um, you are going to see ads interspersed. I mean, that's why we're here today, of course, right? Is to talk about those ads that get interspersed with our family content. You want to be collecting and saving those ads. Um, I don't have to, I'm not going to switch screens, but you, you do this very easily. On the, uh, on the ad, there is three dots on the upper right-hand part of the ad. Is that right, Mark? It's the upper right-hand side? Yes, it is. Okay. So you're going to click that either with your mouse or if you're on a mobile device with your thumb and you're going to say save video or save link and then Facebook allows you to save that off. What I like to do is when I see a particular ad that strikes me as being really creative or contains some elements that I want to study, I save that off, not because I want to shop them later necessarily, maybe I do, but what I'm doing is I'm collecting ads that will inspire me later. So if I see a particular video, if I see some ad creative, or I see just some ideas that are like really good, I hit the, I hit the three dots and I save it off. And when I'm sitting down to work with a client or work on my own business, I will go and and spend some time studying those ads and I'll write down and I'll and I'll basically kind of build a journal of what's great about that ad and helps me generate ideas for my ads. There are very few original ideas. Uh, I like to say um, most of what you see that's going on in the advertising world are copies of what's already working. Um, this is really evident with the insurance companies. I don't remember which one, maybe it was Mayhem with Allstate, but once Mayhem became like this really popular thing, every insurance company now creates ads that are funny, and I'll put that in air quotes, okay? Um, there's Progressive with Pearl, I, don't, I, I forget who it is, but every insurance company now is doing funny ads, and they think that's the way to sell insurance. So somebody came up with the idea and then everybody else followed, okay? Geico's another one, right? Funny ads, we got a lizard, or we have a camel on Humpback Wednesday. Like, advertising is nothing more than people stealing other people's good ideas. I'm not, I'm not saying it's unethical or anything. What I'm saying is, advertisers know that when something works, we should probably take a look at it and not obviously copy it, but we wanna be inspired by it and take it towards our campaigns. When you do this though, the warning is this, um, the best creative will be you being 100% 100% authentic and 100% alignment with your audience. If you try to pull off a funny ad and you're not a funny person, it's not gonna work. Um, you always want to be authentic. Um, I would say in terms of being alignment, let's say if you're in the funeral industry, you don't wanna run a funny ad right? You're not in alignment with your audience. Uh, you want to know kind of what your audience expects and be in alignment with them and to be fully authentic. Here's why. Uh, the market in general has amazing bullcrap detectors and they will be brutally honest. What we know about Facebook ads and what you should realize is that there's very few advertising mediums where people can comment on your advertising. Um, you can sit in front of the television and have commentary with uh, your spouse and your kids and you could laugh at the commercial and point out all the things that are wrong with it or right with it. Um, but on Facebook, anybody and everybody who sees that ad can like, comment, and share on that. It's a very unique 
uh, media, uh, just like Instagram and others, where you can comment, okay? And that's really, really um, important. If you are trying to pull the wool over the eyes, let's say, of your marketplace, and you are not authentic, the market will let you know it. And that ad will essentially become dead because there's so much negative comments on it that you'll have to kill that ad. All right, the market will let you know whether you're in alignment or not, for sure. Here's another thing that I found. Um, raw, authentic content will always beat out, you know, it'll, it'll beat out polished, expensive ads. Now, this is not 100% of the time, but here's the deal. Uh, most of us have limited budgets, and we're not in the position like Coca-Cola to hire uh, a brand agency to spend a million dollars on a campaign to create a great video and, and, and create a movement around their products. Um, that's not what people really want, and what's, it's mostly what people don't expect. Um, most of us don't have the budget and have the creativity to pull that off. What's been especially interesting about the pandemic is that people's tolerance um, for kind of created home content is really, it's accepted now. I'm seeing commercials on television where people are wearing AirPods and they're recording it over like on a webcam just like this. And you see the quality, you know, it's a little bit grainy, the audio isn't perfect, but the messaging is what counts. So don't don't think that just to be successful as an advertiser and be a real creative person is that you have to have a really polished or expensive ad budget. You don't. Shifting gears a little bit. Um, I talked about uh, a meeting I had once uh, at Facebook headquarters. Uh, I had a conversation with somebody there um, who was involved in building the ad uh, algorithm. And here's what he said to me. He said, you know, we're better at bidding than you. Uh, we're better than you at finding your audience, but there's one thing we can't beat you at. I bet you know what that is. It's creative. The number one success factor for your ad is creative. All right, so that's the head Facebook engineer. So this really comes, you know, okay, we can make that statement, right? Uh, but there's evidence that really proves that. So this is this is a graphic from the Nielsen company showing, you know, each part of the ad, like how does it contribute to the overall success? Uh, in terms of sales, right? An ad should produce sales. So this is how they're measuring it. I want you to notice that uh, targeting is less than 10% of it, right? Uh, how how often or how, or how recently they've seen the ad is only 5%, okay? Reach in terms of like reaching the right audience. Uh, branding has a component uh, and creative, 47%. So almost half of the success of an ad is built on the creative. And if you mix that with branding, you know, we're looking at 62%. So, you know, two thirds of the success of your ad um, is going to be related to how successful you are with the creative. Okay. Now, I don't remember if it was webinar one or webinar two, forgive me, but I showed you how the ad auction works and, and how, you know, you, uh, and how much you pay as an advertiser for that particular ad or that particular impression. So it was, you know, how much you bid or your budget, the action rate, which was, you know, how well it converts, and then the user value, how often they engage or click on your ad, okay? Just look about uh, what creative does. So this is, this is uh, coming out of Facebook itself. So Facebook knows exactly how they're charging you for ads and it knows all these facts and figures. And so this is an in aggregate. Um, what affects the action rate um, on in, in terms of the ad and the action they take on your site? 50%, all right? Good creative can increase your results, increase the action rate by 50% if it's good, but it can affect it negatively 50% if it's bad, okay? That's, that's really killer there. Talk about a big swing in math there, okay? Then user value in terms of the action rate on the ad itself, the click-through rate, the engagement rate. There's a 10% variance. Like you can get a 10% boost to your performance by having a really good creative, and you can also get a 10% penalty if the if the if the creative isn't good. So you have a you have a lot of impact or a lot of ways to impact how much you pay, and creative is kind of the biggest hinge 
that that swings that door. So I, I'm just trying to stress here, like everything I showed you up to this point is important, but this, this here is critical. So what I say is it's better to have great creative and below than average targeting skills that has superior targeting with below average creative. So what that tells me is I should spend less time building my audiences and I should spend more time developing creative, okay? Mark, I'm gonna pause there. Um, I, I went, you know, I kind of was on my pulpit a little bit there on my soapbox. Um, anything you wanna add there or anything that maybe people were wondering about as I went through that first part? You cannot underestimate the importance of your creative. Um, I'm an engineer by training and I love the, the targeting. I love the switches. I love all the things in the Facebook account. But but the honest truth is you can learn that from the ultimate guide. You'll you'll know 90% of what you need to know. And all of the magic, the, the difference between big winners and okay, and the difference between not making it work at all and okay, is all in your ad creative. Um, I, I hate to admit that as an engineer, but it's really the creative side. And, and we're going to give you a bunch of um, bunch of ways to shortcut that. Yeah. So Bob says he doesn't have a, a that creative thing. I um, I don't as well. I don't either. <laughs> and here we are talking to you about Facebook. Like we've we've learned some shortcuts and some guidelines. And and so this is the most important piece of it that you can't just learn from a book. You have to do and you have to practice. And speaking of the book, I think Sean, uh, um, who's helping us uh, with the tech side of this, is going to post a link. If you haven't got the ultimate guide to Facebook advertising yet, I, I don't know what you're waiting for. I mean, I know it's kind of like out of stock in some places. Uh, Sean's going to give you a link to a place that it's absolutely in stock. Um, but I, I've heard from a number of you, you. You emailed me and said, hey, I got it. I'm loving it. Awesome. Like if you have got it, one of the best things you could do as a favor to me for doing these webinars is give me a great review. Uh, if you're not going to give me a great review, reach out to me and tell me why. All right. But uh, I want a lot of people to have this book and, and reviews are really important. So I'd love for you to leave a review on Amazon. Uh, let me know what you thought about it but not more importantly, let others know what you thought about it. Uh, we'd really love for you to get a hand, uh, get get this book in your hands and keep it by your desk uh, as you're working on your Facebook accounts. Cool, so winning creative. Uh, let me give you some ABCs, all right? Uh, let, let's go back to grammar school on this. We all remember our ABCs. Uh, I wanna help you remember what, what are three critical, comp uh, critical components to a great Facebook ad. Uh, a great Facebook ad is number one, going to draw attention, all right? The second thing is it's going to relay a benefit. And number three is it's gonna have a low friction call to action, all right? So attention, benefit, call to action. There's a term that Facebook uh, uses quite frequently. It's called thumb stopping content, right? So what we do is we, we get our phones, all right? And we scroll through our phones. And when we see something that's interesting that grabs our attention, our thumb stops, all right? Hence the name thumb stopping content. That's our number one goal uh, with a Facebook ad. It's the first thing that we got to try to do. We, we got to grab attention, okay? What's interesting about a Facebook ad is that it's much different than other types of ads that you may have written. So if you're coming from another platform, uh, some of you come from a direct response uh, where you're used to writing maybe a sales letter or a brochure. Uh, we focus in on things like the headline and in our opening body copy. We, we, we focus in on different things on that type of advertising, but, but Facebook is different. All right. In terms of what should we be prioritizing in terms of the elements, it's the media that's number one. When I say media, what we're talking about is your video or your still image that you attach to your ad. Okay, That's the first thing that people see when they're scrolling through. They don't see your headline. They don't see your copy. They don't see your call to action button. What they see is your media. All right. So the first thing that we want to pay attention to when we're building our ad creative is our media. Then the second thing they're going to look at is the primary text. And if you look at your Facebook feed right now and you come across some content, you're going to see, especially on your mobile device, you're going to see three lines of content. 
okay? And then you're going to see a ellipsis or a read more. You have to hit your thumb to basically open up the rest of the copy, okay? The second most important part is what I'm saying, primary text is those three lines. So it goes from image, okay, to those three lines of text, and then also your Facebook page name, okay? Your, your Facebook page cover photo, not your cover photo, your profile photo and your page name show up on your, on your ad. So you want to have some congruency there and you want to have some clarity there so people can like immediately know that this particular image is associated with this page. So it wants to, you, you need that page name and your profile pic to be something that people will stop and recognize. I prefer, by the way, um, I, didn't, I didn't put this in the presentation, but I have found, and Dennis Yu, who is one of the contributors to this book, says that if you use a face as a profile picture, that you're going to get more engagement than you would if, let's just say, a logo. And just think about that inherently. Facebook is where people connect personally, correct? And so if you use a, a picture uh, in your profile pic versus a logo, you're going to get much more action. <coughs> Excuse me. All right. Then, uh, as you go down, the next thing people are going to look at is your social proof. Okay, so this is your likes, this is your comments, this is your shares. All of that elements that's below your ad or below your post is what people are going to be reading. So, now, if you don't have, if this is a new ad, obviously you don't have a lot of social proof. All right, what we're really looking for is an ad that can run over time and build up social proof. And I'm going to show you an example of that in a minute. Then, fourth, is your headline and your call to action. So the headline on a Facebook ad and on an Instagram ad, for that matter, is below your image. All right? It's below the media. Uh, it's barely seen. In fact, it's probably the least most important part of your ad. Your call to action button, that's your learn more, shop now, download now, register now. Those buttons are actually seen more than your headline. So in terms of priority, you know, focus, focus on your media and focus on your primary text and make sure your page name is, is tight. So this is a coaching client of mine. They have this really cool innovative app called PetsV and it is a social media platform for pets. Now obviously pets can't use social media, but that's the point. All right, it's fun, it's funny, it's for people that really, really love their cats and their dogs. So I want you to put yourself in the position, if you're not a cat lover, just pretend you are for a second, okay? You're scrolling through your Facebook news feed and somebody's arguing about Donald Trump and somebody's arguing about Joe Biden and all of a sudden you come across a picture or a video here of a cat wearing a wig with a tiara. Now, that's gonna catch your eye. All right, that's the number one thing you're going to see when you get to this ad. Your thumb's going to stop scrolling. When that happens, your eyes are going to be drawn up, and you're going to say, okay, achieve the perfect look. So, all right, we're using a little bit of, um, I don't know, what is that called when you do that? I don't remember. You're, it's just fun, Bob. It's just, it's just fun. fun. Okay, perfect. All right, kickstart your modeling meow meow deling career the catwalk is for you with with some emojis there i could never write this uh chelsea who's my client she's absolutely gifted at this and this absolutely attracts people who love cats so this is for modeling purposes my eyes are drawn then my eyes go up and i see pets be no humans allowed oh that's interesting paw print that that fits you know i don't necessarily you know, we don't need a profile pic there, but the pet, the paw pet, yeah, that, that makes sense here. Then I'm going to draw it down and be like, whoa, what's this about? I'm drawing all the way down here to number three. Look at this particular ad. It's been running a little while. 130 comments, 147 shares. Um, if you can get an ad that people think is interesting enough to share, man, you got a winner there. Um, look at all these likes. All right, funny, love, 1,300 of those. Then you go, okay, what is this? Oh, it's a free app just for pets. And then the call to action is installed now. All right, that's kind of the, how does somebody engage and review my ad? It's that, image, text, social proof, headline, call to action.
that's what's going to happen. So let's talk a little, let's talk a few building blocks. Let's get to some more practical stuff here. Um, so let, let, let's talk about how we build one of these. Number one, uh, notice that the particular ad we looked at was contrasting. All right, you want to contrast to stand out. People won't. People will stop scrolling if something is contrasting and it catches their eye. All right, even for a millisecond. Um, if your ad kind of blends into the background and doesn't draw their eye, they're going to probably scroll right over it. So think about how to create contrast to stand out, all right? And invoke wonder and curiosity. Well, what's more curious than a cat wearing a tiara, all right? Can't get much more wonderful and, and curious than that, right? But what invokes wonder and curiosity in your market, okay? Uh, entertainment is a nice building block, okay? Um, if you have the gift of being able to entertain and have the ability to be authentic and align with your market through entertainment, it's a great building block to a great ad. Um, in as we get towards copy, you want to be making sure that you're addressing challenges. Okay, you want to deal with frustrations. You want to talk about pain or desire. All right, now we're getting into kind of copywriting 101 here, right? Um, if our ad is not doing one of these things, uh, it's probably not going to get responded to. Um, in terms of what we teach, quite often. Um, what we want to do is really address pain. I think, Mark, it's probably, uh, we talk about this in our course, but if you're kind of a newbie copywriter, one of the ways to really go after this and be good at this is to agitate more than to try to explain or, or things like that. Is, is that kind of the way you would word that? Yeah, we misery loves company, right? So we mm -hmm. want to share our pain. We can identify with pain. Um, more so than when we're in pain, which is when we we need a solution that we can do. But when we talk about the the other side of pain, the pleasure, a lot of people can't relate, so it doesn't feel like the ad is for them. Yeah. So so most of the ads, especially if you're kind of beginning, is if you want to go from the pain side of things, because uh, people are more apt to spend money to relieve pain than to satisfy a pleasure. Okay. Uh, fifth building block, which you could use, and, and and your ad, by the way, doesn't have to have all six of these. These are just some building blocks and some ideas here. Uh, the fifth one is demonstrate credibility. Uh, whether it's you teaching, let's say, uh, face to camera on a video, or if you have a testimonial or a case study, or if you have a product demo, uh, demonstrating the credibility of yourself or your product is a great way to uh, start an ad. And then just kind of a formula here, this is something we develop with our students. It's, you know, here's an action, so that result, okay? You know, learn piano so that you can entertain your family and friends this holiday, All right? That's an example of kind of a way to build an ad, you know? Um, you know, buy Simply Safe, which is a, you know, security company. Buy Simply Safe so that you can rest you know, so you can rest well at night, so you can protect your property, all right, so you can have peace of mind. So you want to put an action statement, all right, do this so that your life looks like this. So it's often like, here is here is a solution to solve a problem, all right? So those are some, some building blocks. So let's talk about some creative cheat codes, okay? We're all, we're all again, not creative experts here. Uh, let, let's talk about some ways to shortcut our, our learning time so we can get started faster. <clears throat> the first uh, cheat code is story. Um, there's, there's really two ways to get more sales from your ad. Uh, the first one is to spend more money. Uh, the second one is to deepen your story and stand out. Um, so if you have a lot of money, I'd follow action point number one. If you have limited resources, then I would suggest you follow action point number two, okay? Uh, reason why is people love to be connected to people who that share the same slices of life with them. Um, and in fact, they're gonna go out of their way to support somebody they believe in. Think about this in terms of the political climate, right? People go out of their way to engage with people that share their place in life, their story in life. All right, a good advertiser will understand the stories that their potential customers are telling themselves and align their ad copy to a story that will engage their audience, okay? 
And here's and here's why. Stories make you immune to competition. Okay, people are going to knock off your product, but they can't knock off your story. Uh, I tell this story in the Ultimate Guide to Facebook Advertising. I, I talk about my experience with Boulder Band headbands. Now, when they started back in 2013, yeah, it was 2013. Um, it was just JD and his wife Amy. Amy had this idea to to develop this headband. Uh, she had a problem. She's a CrossFitter. She's a mom. Um, she has a few hours a day to go work out uh, before she had other things to do. And one of her frustrations was she wore a headband and it kept slipping off her head and the sweat was dripping in her eyes. And she thought there must be a better way, right? This is a good, this is a product story. So she sat down at her, at her dining room table um, with a bunch of different pieces of material and went to the task of building a headband or designing a headband that would not slip off her head, but would also be effective at soaking up the sweat. Guess what? She came across something that worked. She brought it to her CrossFit friends. They tried it and said, yeah, this really works. So they thought, hey, maybe some people will want to buy this. They came to me and we, we basically said, hey, um, this is going to work. But I told her this. I said, Amy, if you have a good product and you were able to develop it at your kitchen table, um, it's going to get knocked off. But here's what is going to make you stand out. If we tell your story, we're going to find women who are just like you. So we developed a video. It's a short 30-second video. And at that time, it wasn't even HD. But it was this. Hi, I'm Amy Krause. I'm a mom. I'm a wife. I'm a CrossFitter. And I've, I found a problem. I couldn't find a headband that would that would uh, stay on my head while I worked out and the sweat dripped to my eyes. So I developed Boulder Man headbands. Okay, I'm paraphrasing, but that's it. Well, guess what? You know, within one year, uh, they won the Shopify Retailer of the Year by selling the most amount of headbands, um, not headbands, in the clothing category. They sold more headbands against people selling shirts, pants, dresses, things like that. Um, they sold the most money in 2014 on Shopify and won that prize. And we built an entire business based off of Amy's story. There were knockoffs. There were dozens of companies that tried to knock us off. They sold it cheaper, but people stayed loyal to Amy because they were moms, they were CrossFitters, and they held the same slice of life as her. And they built an amazing eight-figure business, okay? People don't like to be sold to, but they enjoy buying from people they like. So as much as possible, inject personality into your ads, inject personality into your business. All right, that's going to help you stand out. Stories equal likability. If you're not good at generating stories, here's some ways to, to kind of get your brain going. Um, ask a why question. Why do you do what you do? All right. If you are a mortgage consultant, all right, and you're listening to this and you say, well, what, why do, why, why am I in the mortgage business? Okay. If the only thing that you could come up with is I like to make money, um, it's not going to work. Right. But if you can say, I enjoy working with young families who have been turned down by other banks. Okay. And I'm able to get them in a home. That's why I do what I do. When I get a young family, into a home and get them on the way to generational wealth, that, that's a story, okay? That's, that's, that's something that people are gonna attach onto. But if the only thing you're able to market as a mortgage consultant or a broker is I have a, I have a rate that's better than this other guy, well, you just sound like everybody else. But if you tell a story of why you do what you do and it's an authentic story, you're gonna get more business than everybody else. Ask a what question. So if you're an e-commerce business, so what does your product do that's better than the others? Okay. So if you got a headband, she's got a headband, they've got a headband, why is your headband better? All right. If you can't answer that question, you're going to have a difficult time competing. Another great question is a who question. Okay. Who's been transformed by using my service? All right. Um, this leads you to third-party content or user-generated content. Instead of you getting on camera, let's say, put your customers or clients on camera. Let them tell a story. How did Mark change my life by working with him? Okay, that is really, really powerful.
when you can do these types of things, you're going to be standing out absolutely in the newsfeed. Here's a second cheat code, video. Uh, Facebook prefers video. Uh, a number of years ago, Facebook basically told us, hey, we're a video company now, right? And just think about it. When you look in your Facebook application, what do you see? It, it's video. It's all video. Um, why is that? Well, Facebook knows that they get greater engagement from video, so they're going to prioritize it. Um, pretty much time after time, video produces better cost per action. Now, it might be different for you, but I've run a lot of ads. And about 80% of the time, video outperforms the still image. So that's pretty compelling to me. Uh, to me, video tells a better story. Um, you can write out a story and you know maybe has some effect if you're a good writer. But video is just better at storytelling. You can get more across with words, images, all right, and, and audio than you could by just writing, in my opinion. But I, I think I'm right. Video is also best for mobile. Um, when you look at your mobile phone, um, I don't know about you, but the text is a little small. Maybe I'm just revealing my age here. But video is much better for mobile. Uh, people don't have to do as much reading. They don't like to do reading on their mobile device. They like to kind of sit and watch it. They want to engage with it that way. Um, the other thing about video is it gets shared. Um, sharing videos is something people love to do. And video videos get shared. Images don't. <clears throat> Cheat code number three, um, repurposing past successful content. Uh, most of you aren't diving in kind of for the first time and you've got some history. So what are some things that you could use for ads that may be sitting around uh, gathering dust? Um, blog posts. Um, most of you have been blogging at some point in your career, and maybe you have some stats about some blog posts that were particularly engaging or got more uh, visits, um, you could do that. <clears throat> if you're emailing clients on a regular basis, um, take a look in your CRM and find out which emails are getting opened up, which emails you know are getting commented on. Um, that's a great source of content. Articles, okay, same thing as kind of blog posts, but maybe you're writing articles for other publications. You know, find out what, what though, you know, if you've got something that you've written that was a particular engaging, you can draw from that. Um, I know some of you are posting on Facebook organically. Um, you, you're trying to build engagement on your Facebook page. Um, you can look in the stats of your Facebook page and find out which posts are getting the most engagement. Um, those are good things to repurpose for ads. You can look on other platforms. So if you're active on Twitter or perhaps Instagram or LinkedIn, um, and you had some particular post or content that were quite engaging there based on the stats, you can use that on Facebook. YouTube videos, same thing, just a different platform. You know, if you've got a YouTube channel and you have several videos that uh, got a lot of views or comments or, or shares, uh, repurpose that video and use it on Facebook. The other thing we like to do is we're, we're already running ads. Let's take a look at some ads that are already successful and think about how we can slightly modify them and reuse them in a different way. So maybe you have some really good ad copy, all right, some good primary text, maybe change up the media, all right? Maybe you've got a really good video, all right? And then let's write a, a different piece of ad copy or a different headline or a different call to action. That's a great way to repurpose things. All right, that's all I got today, and I know there's going to be a lot of questions. Again, I want to remind you that uh, the book contains a lot of strategies uh, that are well beyond what I taught here today. Um, it's going to talk about ways to create good copy. Uh, my business partner in Feet Stories, Brandon Boyd, has an entire chapter on creating great video. Uh, Ryan Dice and Molly Pittman have chapters on uh, writing ad copy and creating great ads. Uh, there's a lot of content. Mark, about how much of that book do you think is, is related to creating great ad creative? Um, probably a third of the book. And we can cover all of the, the levers and, and audiences and bidding and all that good stuff pretty quickly. And, you know, I don't know if you've shared it, but we started this book when we wrote it. It was 605 pages. <laughs> and we had to cut out a lot of stuff to get it down so it could actually be glued into a nonfiction book. <laughs> and um, a lot of the, the good stuff that we cut out um, was related to creative because we we don't feel like 
you can have enough inspiration and enough help on the creative side. So that's it's it's a large part of what you're going to do, and it's it's like you've talked about, Bob, the biggest factor in your success. Yeah. So again, um, you know, there, there's a link to get the book directly. Uh, I also have a, a a website set up for you, ultimatefb.com. Uh, it has a link to get the book on Amazon, but it also has some bonuses. There's 10 interviews. Um, if you think Mark is brilliant, you could watch about a 45 minute interview with Mark uh, that I did with him. We had a really good time talking about how he created the book and some really insight uh, insightful uh, networking strategies. Mark is brilliant at creating relationships. Uh, I also interview Ryan Dice, who's the founder of Digital Marketer, uh, Jeff Walker, who's the founder of the Product Launch Formula, uh, Mike Renard, who's known as the Copy, uh, the Chimp Wolf. Uh, He's a fantastic Facebook ads copywriter. It's going to be a really insightful interview there. I talked to Brandon Boyd about creating great videos uh, for your Facebook ads. Uh, Dennis Yu goes in and talks about uh, some of the things he's doing on Facebook. There's 10 interviews in total. They're completely free. Uh, head over to ultimatefb.com and get a link to the book, but also opt in and get uh, all those interviews and listen to those at your leisure. So, um, Mark, I'd love to, at this time, let's go over some questions that people have and just see how we can help some people for the last uh, 15 minutes or so. Sure. Um, the one that just came in while we've been talking, um, I, I like, is, uh, is it okay to include a logo on the creative or is it more authentic without? So, that, that's the question. Mm -hmm. Interesting. So, um, when you say logo, um, there's obviously a few places you could put it. You could put it as your as your Facebook profile. Um, sometimes that makes sense. Most often it doesn't. Um, you could put the logo um, as part of your video, like as a watermark. What I wouldn't suggest though is using that as your as your image on your ad, because logos themselves don't necessarily um, create interest or drive the drive the engagement. Um, we spend a lot of time on our logos and we're really attached to our logos. I know that because, uh, you know, we've all created logos for a business. Um, I have found, though, that logos are, are mostly ways to identify us and shouldn't be something that you count on to drive engagement or drive response. Um, I would use them as, like I said, the, the best way you use logos is typically within like a watermark within a video uh, just so we can identify ourselves. And, and then secondarily, if the logo makes sense and it's clear as your Facebook profile, you, you can go ahead and use it there. Okay, great. And um, are there any places where someone could go and see a whole bunch of Facebook ads other than their feed? Maybe looking at competitors mm. or... Yeah, um, um, so Facebook has an amazing repository of great ads. Um, I believe it's the Facebook, is it the Facebook Creative Studio? I think it's the Facebook Ads Library. Let me see here. Well, I'm, there's a couple things I want to show there. Um, let me see here. I'm going to look at this. Give me one second. I want to look it up. And, and while Bob's looking that up, one of the things you can do, if, if you see an ad that you like from a business, you can click on their page at the top of the ad. And on um, and the desktop version, down on the right-hand side, it says page transparency. And then there's a link right there to the ads library. And that'll show you all the ads that are currently running for that person. Um, one of the ones that I love to look at is the Dollar Shave Club. They have hundreds of ads running. Um, again, a lot of them funny, <laughs> um, but but they, they catch my attention. Um, and you'll see a handful of advertisers, you know, over and over again that, that make really great ads that you can copy. You know, if, if you if you have someone twisted around shaving, that makes sense for shaving. But the idea is something you may be able to steal. You know, if you have an app that helps your life somehow and it's not for your pets, Bob, you know, you can you can show somebody using the app or, or, or things like that or or using the app in a funny way. Cool. Um, here you go, Bob. Yeah. So I want to show you that. So. Uh... Obviously, there's a new interface on the desktop. It took me a second to find it. So uh, if you if you want to kind of see what a particular uh, brand or individual is doing advertising, go visit their Facebook page. So we're on Perry Marshall's page. And what you're going to see here is something called page transparency. All right. I want you to click see all. And it's going to just give you some ideas here. 
of, of what it's doing. And you'll see here, if the Facebook page is running ads, it's gonna say this page is currently running ads. So what you're gonna do is click this and you're gonna to go to the ad library, okay? And then, you know, you're gonna see a number of different ads that are running on the, on the page itself. So not only the ad that you saw. So, you know, here's an ad that Perry is running for another book that he wrote called uh, Detox, Declutter, what is it? It's Detox, we'll pitch it here. Detox, Declutter, Dominate. Declutter and Dominate. Yeah. So you can actually see like, all right, well, this is cool. So, you know, he's testing this ad out. So we can click on that and we could see what it looks like on different uh, platforms. Okay. All right. He has different versions of the ad. So we can, you know, we can look through and see what things are doing. Okay. Um, we could go to really, um, let's see, any other page. What did you say, Mark? Dollar Shave Club? Yep. I love their ads. They have lots of them. Okay. So we're in the ads library for, for Dollar Shave Club. <laughs> they right. usually have lots of them. <laughs> well, here, it was, oh, here it was regional. So I had to click on the U.S. Okay. So hate the pink tax. So they're going to do a play here. So there, we can literally scroll down for forever and see a bunch of ads for them. All right. But you can actually go in and play the video. Okay. Uh, look at the ad copy. Look at different variations of it. So, oh, that's gross to stop on that. <laughs> All right. Uh, so that's one way to do it. Uh, I believe, boy, I want to say it's Facebook. Oh, the Creative Hub, Bob? Facebook yeah. Creative Hub? I think it's Creative Hub. Mm. Oh, I think, well, I don't know if I have to go in as one of my... Uh, This is actually going to pull in. So this Creative Hub, I don't use this very often, but what's actually going to happen is is there's template-driven ads here, and you're going to go through and create mock-up, all right? And so there's going to be different templates and formats that you could play with from ads that are already successful, all right? So that's one way. That's another way to do that. I, I like, I, I you know, I like to create ads kind of organically. And I like to use the ad library like I just showed you to kind of get inspiration and, and kind of build them kind of the natural way. Um, I don't know, Mark, if you could find, I thought there was another link where we could see some case studies and things like that. Maybe you want to fire another question at me and then we could maybe go look. Sure. Um... <laughs> Uh, what well, it's from a different person, but the question again was on, on Perry's website. Uh, Perry's ad had his website watermarked in the corner. Is that a best, best practice? I wouldn't call it a best practice. I think uh, it's probably something that we're testing. You know, um, mm -hmm. I, I think I think I think it's useful um, if you're if you're trying to grow your brand. I, I don't think it hurts in any way, certainly, but I, I wouldn't consider it a best practice. Yeah, it's it's useful if if you're already advertising to people familiar with you to warm traffic, mm -hmm. middle and bottom of funnel. Um, otherwise, if people don't know you, then um, yeah. probably not. Huh. Um, and that's that's it for the questions at the moment. Um, there's one about the book. Is the interface using the new, is the book using the new interface of the ads manager? <laughs> I personally made screenshots. We had 300 screenshots in that book, 304, I think, and I had to make remake screenshots. I think three or four times uh, on the split testing chapter, we wrote the chapter, made screenshots. A week later, we proofed it, had to make all new screenshots. Um, so it's it's current as of earlier this year, which is the newest um, version yeah. of the interface. There's yep. a couple of little things that are missing. And if you wait two more weeks, another few things will be missing. <laughs> but I, I wouldn't worry too much about the actual screenshots because what to do is in there. And um, that's actually more important than where a lever might be. Yeah. Okay. Is there anything else, um, Mark? Or uh, one more just came in. I like this one. Uh, what's the most successful Facebook ad creative you've ever seen? <laughs> oh wow! So uh, this is actually well. So I'll, I'll name a couple. So there, there's one in the book. Uh, I actually have a link. Uh, if you get the book, there is a link to a resource page that has a bunch of additional training, uh, some up-to-date stuff. And I actually show you the 30-second ad we did for Boulder Band headbands. 
um, we ran that ad probably for about 18 months straight uh, without without any creative modifications. Um, we got that thing up to thousands and thousands and thousands of um, engagements, and it it just it just it just ran and ran and ran. Um, that's very unusual to have a, a top of funnel ad like that, Mark. That you know you could run for months. Um, another one, I I believe I have the example in the book. But uh, we, we created a video for a uh, check printing company uh, like, you know, like Deluxe, but it's a, it's, a, it's a company out of Canada. And we created an ad uh, really inexpensively. Uh, actually, uh, we filmed them here in my office. And um, that ad has been running top of funnel for going on four years. And um, it's essentially uh, the business owner of that company on camera talking about uh, how people are getting ripped off by banks who overcharge p them for, you know, getting checks. And um, it's been running four years straight uh, atop a funnel. And we are getting uh, 15 cent visitors to his landing page. And his entire campaign is, uh, for a very low margin product, is is very much in the positive return on ad spend. So really, really proud of that. Um, I want to think, was there, was there another one? Um, I worked with a, uh, a, a retailer of goods that are created by artisans in Nepal. And one of the things I was proud of is, um, a lot of people will buy products from overseas to exploit people. Uh, my client actually was creating jobs for people in Nepal who were, uh, being oppressed, um, and were, were poor, but they are amazing artisans. So he would actually um, go there and he, he worked out with a, a, an importer, a way for them to, for these individuals to create products, um, get them to this importer, get them sold in the United States. And uh, my client shared a significant amount of the profit with those artisans. And so I was really proud to not only show off the amazing jewelry and, and products they made, uh, but we were able to tell the story of, of, of the individuals who were making it. Um, so people know we weren't exploiting them. You know, it wasn't like cheap workers. They, they, were, they were actually learning, they were earning a living wage. Um, so it was a really powerful way to, we, we use video and static images to show off the products. But a very important, of our, important part of our strategy was as when somebody came into the store, uh, we used retargeting to show them the video of, of my client in Nepal interacting with these artisans and kind of featuring them. So I was really proud of that campaign as well. Okay, and then a uh, person asked, um, I, I answered already, but it's good for the group, is um, what sort of tools do you even use to create video, specifically the hardware? Well, um, iPhone. <laughs> Yeah, iPhone and a, a run-of-the-mill web, webcam. Is what yeah, we it's uh, it's interesting. So um, we're we're developing, uh, we're actually developing kind of a course for people uh, at Feed Stories. But I, I will say that um, an an iPhone creates 4K video now. Um, you don't need to go more than 1080p. But uh, get yourself. Uh, so you have an iPhone or you have a Samsung Samsung phone. Uh, creates high quality. So get yourself a uh, mini tripod with a phone mount, and then uh, make sure you get a lavalier type mic because what I'll tell you is a video needs to have great audio. Uh, a video with poor quality will still be okay if the audio is good. Um, so spend time making sure that you have good audio. So get a good lavalier mic from Amazon and then get yourself kind of a simple ring light so that your face is lit. So you can see right now I'm on camera, I'm lit up. Let me turn my light off. Okay. So don't shoot a video like this. Like don't do a presentation or shoot a video like this. All I have is a simple LED light here and it lights up my face. The camera can focus and shows off, you know, this this pretty thing, you know, that I spend hours and hours every morning on. So good lighting, good sound, okay? Um, and then just make sure, um, here's the great thing about, audio, uh, about video, is that you can edit it. So you can take multiple takes. You don't have to be one take uh, Charlie. Uh, you, you can shoot several takes until you get it right. Um, 
practice, uh, I, I would say write out. We, we don't do scripting, by the way, uh, at our company. We, we do conversation. So what we work off are outlines. So outline what you want to say in your video and just do short segments and do as many takes as necessary. And then you take the, you, you take the individual takes that you sound the best and look the best in and you stitch them together uh, in editing and you've got a great video. All right. And that's going to be really authentic, by the way. Cool. All right. And then to circle back to our uh, earlier question, the Facebook business success stories, facebook.com slash business slash success shows what Facebook has found to be really cool. That's it. Yeah. I think that link changes. It, <laughs> it seems to have since we wrote the book, because I don't remember it being business slash success, but. Okay. So that's Facebook, fine. if you search for Facebook business success stories, that's exactly what we were thinking of. So they have examples by industry, right? Industry and market. I think you can yep. you can pick out different categories and see what uh, other companies are doing and having success on Facebook. So that's, that's another great reference. All right. So we are uh, near the top of the hour. Mark, thank you again for moderating and uh, uh, being part of this, obviously helping with the book. <laughs> Um, this is the last webinar in this series. Uh, I guarantee you I'll be back with some different content in the very near future. Um, I'm going to, again, shoot some videos to answer uh, some of the other questions that came in on the webinars. Look for those uh, on the Entrepreneur website and social media channels. Um, again, thank you for attending. Uh, we appreciate uh, you coming in and learning, and uh, we'll see you over at ultimatefb.com. You know, get your hands on that book, and uh, if you if you enjoyed it, we would really really love a, a great review. So, thanks everybody. We'll see you thank next you. time.